Hi, my name is Keith, and this is my review of the Tuhoi Tako knife. It's a Finnish Puko made by Irei Pu. Now, first off, my apologies if I'm getting the pronunciations of this wrong because I do not speak Finnish. And before I get into the knife itself, I want to talk about the ordering process. I ordered the knife from Lamnia.com. They are a Finnish company, and when I placed my order, I was a little bit concerned that my credit card may not go through properly, that my bank might think that it's a fraudulent charge since it's a, a charge coming from Finland instead of here in the United States. But I didn't have any trouble at all. The credit card was approved and then Lamnia shipped my order just immediately and it arrived within a week. So I'm really impressed with Lamnia and their ability to get me a product from Finland here to the United States so quickly. And now, um, little bit about the package. It came out uh, in a box smaller than what I would have expected and quite light. It almost seems like it's empty, but it's not. So let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, knife itself and get into the good, the bad, and the ugly. Although I don't think there's really anything ugly about this knife. All right, let's crack open the box and take a look at it. It came just in peanut shells, and that's fine. Nothing here to damage. This is it with its sheath. And we'll start talking about the sheath first. The sheath is nice, full grain leather. It is really thick, solid. It's the real stuff. Well sewn, well made. Has this traditional finished thong that most Puko knives come with. Feeling it though, it feels rather papery. It doesn't feel, I guess, sort of spongy and oily the way I'm used to feeling leather. And so it could be that this just needs to be treated. It might have been the, the dye or the, the, the way this had to be stretched to fit it so tightly. But I think that, uh, that some conditioning would do good for this leather. But overall, it's a good quality sheath. Well made. Now something else to note on here that's a very good thing is that the knife is very snug in the sheath. I mean, it is never going to just fall out. So clearly, good fit, proper fit for this knife. Now here at this edge, this has been skived down, very thin, skived where they, they thinned the leather folded it over and glued it so you don't have just a raw edge here where the knife is going in and out. It's well done. Inside here is basically a plastic uh, case to keep the knife over time from, I guess, cutting into the leather sheath. It would be cool from a traditional standpoint if that uh, inside sheath in there was made out of wood but the plastic probably holds up better anyway so no real complaints there it's inside a leather sheath and with the sheath being you know full grain leather high quality i've really got no complaints when it comes to the sheath now let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the knife itself very snug fit takes a bit of pull to get it out and this is it one of the things on this particular knife that's always hard to get when you're looking at uh, pictures online is whether the blade itself, whether this is truly black versus shiny, you know, polished metal, or if that's just sort of the way the, the metal is glaring. And in this case, this truly is um, blackened metal. It is the basically unfinished, unpolished metal that they were uh, working on when they made the knife. One of the really cool things that I love about this is you can see all of these indentations from where they hit it with a hammer. Um, it reminds me a lot of my uh, drumming days. I used to be a drummer and I used to have cymbals that were made by Sabian and they were hand hammered and all those hand hammered cymbals had these kind of indentations in it. It makes it very personalized. Um, you can basically see that a human was actually pounding on it and it's on both sides of these. It shows up a little better on this side, but uh, the indentations are here on all of it where you can see where they hand hammered this blade. I really like that feature. I like that they left it unfinished here where it looks like you're looking at the raw metal versus where they ground it 
and polished uh, you know the grind for the blade the spine itself on the blade is completely unfinished I mean you are looking at the bare metal bar the edge when you feel it it's never even you know been touched with a grinder or anything it's just truly the metal bar as it came straight to them from you know whoever produced the metal now one thing about this black that's on here is that is the blackness from the um, you know metal production and it will come off so I've got this black now on my fingers so when you when you want to get serious and you're going to start using this knife especially if you're going to use it uh, for food preparation if you're uh, gonna you know cut up fruit and veggies while you're camping or you know skin an animal while you're out in the bush whatever you're gonna do you probably want to get that off it's not probably gonna hurt you but you know who wants black metal soot on their food? Now, this knife is called the Tuohi Tako. I think I'm pronouncing it right. Again, forgive me if I'm not. But it's called that because Tuohi Tako, I believe, means birch jacket or birch sheath, perhaps. Uh, translating it, I think, you know, literally means birch jacket. And here, of course, you have the birch wood handle made by layers upon layers of birch. Um, I really liked that sort of handle. One, I've never had a knife with birch, and one of the things that really surprised me about it is that it feels like cork. It has a very soft, spongy cork feel to it, and in fact, if I was blindfolded and was feeling it, I would think I was feeling a big wine cork. Um, so this could make for a very comfortable handle. Um, one of the things about the handle that may not be comfortable, one of the negatives, is, is this back, I'll call it the pommel of the knife, but it's this enlarged bolster where the handle gets larger. That's very traditional, and it serves a very realistic purpose because when it's, when it's in the case, I mean, these knives are designed where you're in Finland in the snow, and you've got to be able to get it out, and you need that, really, to be able to grab the handle and pull it out, especially... If you're in sub-zero weather and wearing big thick gloves, you'd need some way to get it out. And so it makes sense for it to be there. I understand the practicality of it. Comfort-wise, I find it to maybe be um, not the most comfortable thing in the world, or at least perhaps to my untrained uh, hand as far as using a knife like this goes. Holding it just in your typical pushing away from you, if you were you know, carving a, you know, a, a pointed stick or something, this doesn't become an issue when you have this kind of grip. But when you switch more to trying to, you know, cut something, you know, process food, when this is in the palm of my hand, it doesn't feel that comfortable. There's this edge here that feels like it's digging in. But that could also, once I get used to it, be a plus because basically it feels like it wants to sort of bury itself up against this part of my palm. And that will keep it to where, although these knives aren't really designed for any push type work, it's always supposed to be a drawn movement. If I was doing any pushing, it helps keep that knife where it is and keep my fingers from slipping up onto the blade, which since this front bolster does not have a guard, without the finger guard, if you did slip, you could uh, slice your finger open pretty good with it. Um, but as is with this, I feel pretty confident with being able to work with the knife without really ever uh, having my grip slip and cutting myself. We'll see how that goes in the future. I'll uh, send you some video of me bleeding if I uh, am wrong about that. Now on the bolsters, this front one is rather unfinished. It's, uh, it's, it's two size. It's made out of steel, although the, I think on the website it said brass, but it doesn't look like brass to me. It's not brass colored. It just looks like steel. It's semi-polished. It's a good fit. They, I don't have to see gaps here, so they did a good job with getting it fit and properly positioned. It's not loose. It's, it's the way it needs to be, but if you were looking for something as a very ornamental, highly polished type uh, knife, this is much more utilitarian. It's, uh, I said, you could feel on the edge where they didn't spend a whole lot of time grinding, smoothing, and polishing this. As opposed to the rear bolster, where they have it shining like a mirror. And you can see, of course, where they've hammered the, uh, the tail of that uh, 
uh, the knife onto there. And so that's the handle. The blade <clears throat> itself, um, I find a really good size. I could use it as a paring knife in the kitchen if I wanted. I've already sliced some uh, salami, cheese, that sort of stuff with it. Um, the grind on it does a great job with just the, the typical everyday work. Um, these are supposed to be a zero grind where this grind goes all the way to the edge. And I guess for all intents and purposes, it does. But if you were to look super close at it, there is a very slight, tiny second bevel there where basically after they did this grind, when they really wanted to sharpen this knife before sending it out, it went through some sort of knife sharpener that put a very, very tiny uh, secondary bevel on that. And so someone might grind that completely off of when they're sharpening. Um, I myself am going to just kind of go with it because I use a uh, typical stick it in and just draw it through type instant sharpener quite a bit. So I don't really mind that very tiny bevel. Hopefully with that angle you can, you can see what I'm talking about. But it's supposed to be just a single uh, zero grind bevel. Um, the knife's very lightweight. Seems very well made overall and I must say is beautiful. Um, it has no maker's mark. Um, if you did not know this was Erepu, you would not know who made it. Um, they make a, a, a good uh, number of knives in different types of sizes. There's uh, one that's basically this exact knife, but leather instead of birch, and it's got some inset. Um, I forget what it's called, like Naki Tako, something like that, um, meaning leather jacket. And it was beautiful but I just kind of felt like the uh, the birch was a little more traditional and so I went with that. Um, they also have some with uh, you know uh, antler sheaths and things like that. The company itself, Erepu, seems to uh, be fairly new to the Puko knife making. They uh, started I believe in 2004 and it looks like they make other products as well like maybe some tourist type products like uh, Cuxes and you know yarn and other decorative things. Um, I think the the knife business is probably an expansion for them um, but Overall a very good high quality knife. I can't be more pleased um, And like I said for You know such a good top grain full grain leather great sheath overall You might want to check it out um, the only place that I've seen these, I believe, so far is at uh, Lamnia. There might be a couple other places. Um, but so far, these uh, Irepu knives seem to be uh, fairly rare here in the United States anyway. Um, and I believe that this is the only review of an Irepu Puko anywhere on YouTube. So enjoy. Let me know what you think. And thanks for watching.